Hello, I'm Dave from Mortgage Solutions of Georgia. I'm a certified mortgage consultant, and today we're going to be talking credit scoring. In order to get a good credit score, you really need to have a firm understanding of what the credit bureaus look at to derive a particular credit score for yourself. There are three main components that carry the most percentage weight-wise when it comes to deriving at your particular credit score. Uh, so let's, let's talk about those first three things. The, the obvious thing is your payment history. Now, your payment history uh, actually constitutes the highest percentage of what your actual credit score is. When we talk payment history, it's as simple as, do you make your payments on time? Your payment history constitutes about 35% of your overall credit score. So obviously, paying bills on time, over a duration of time, helps develop a great credit score. The second factor, which really hurts a lot of people, is called the percentage of use. Okay? What the percentage of use looks at is, if you have two credit cards, and say the high credit limit on those credit cards are $500 a piece, well that means that you have $1,000 available credit to you. And what the percentage of use formula looks at is, okay, we have $1,000 available to us to use, how much of that are we actually utilizing? So for example, if you have a $1,000 credit limit and you're utilizing $900 of that, credit, uh, that available credit, then your percentage of use is 90%. And that's extremely high. And when you have a very high percentage of use ratio, that tends to uh, give you lower credit scores. The ideal percentage of use that you want to make sure that you are at or below is 30%. And we're going to discuss that in a little bit more detail in the next section here. Um, again, their percentage of use, that actually formulates another 30% of your overall credit score. So just between do you pay your accounts on time and are you keeping your credit card balances low, that constitutes 65% of your overall credit score. So those two factors alone are very, very important factors. Uh, another one that I want to just briefly discuss, it constitutes about 15% of your score. And that involves the length of time and the types of credit that you actually have open. See, the credit bureaus want to know that you have a demonstrated history of being able to pay a monthly obligation on time. More importantly, they want to know that you can do that over a duration of time. So typically we're looking for three accounts with a 12-month reporting history with a satisfactory, satisfactory payment history. And the other things that the credit bureaus like to see is they like to see a good mix of credit. What they really like to see is a couple of revolving credit cards, maybe one installment loan, such as a car loan or a furniture account. And on top of that, they really like to see a mortgage. Having a mortgage is actually one of the best things that you can do uh, for your credit score. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times we have applicants call into our office, and the reoccurring theme is, is that, you know, maybe they've paid cash for a lot of their expenditures, uh, so far in their life. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. You can live a whole lifetime and pay cash for everything. Most people would be considering, you know, most people would consider that that's something very admirable. Um, the only time that that really comes down to hurt you is when you try to finance something that you can't pay cash for, such as a house loan. Again, we have to keep in mind that the main reason a mortgage lender or myself, we look at your credit report is to simply determine if I lend you $100,000, what is the likelihood that I'm going to get a return on that investment? Or in other words, what's the likelihood that I'm going to get that money back? So if you have a very limited credit history, the lender can't get a very accurate depiction of how you repay your debt. So a large percentage of the clients that we take applications on, they have lower scores, but it's not necessarily that they have bad credit. It's just that they don't have a lot of credit or don't have any credit. And for that, there's a couple of things that you can do. Um, the first thing that you need to do is to build credit. And the way you should go about that is not with installment loans such as like a American General or any type of finance companies. You really want to steer clear from any type of 
lending institution like a payday advance loan place or a finance place like one main financial anything with the word financial in it tends to be uh, something that you want to steer clear from but the right types of credit to open up to establish a score and establish a good score quickly is a revolving credit card now for individuals who have not had credit in the past you're not just there's probably a large probability that there's it's going to be difficult for you to get your foot in the door credit wise and for individuals like that you probably need to go in the direction of obtaining what's called a secured credit card now if you just do an internet search for secured credit card vendors there's about a million of them online uh, basically what a secured credit card is it's kind of like a starter version to a credit card it's secured to the money that you preemptively send to the bank so here's how this works everybody gets approved for a secured credit card because there's no risk to the bank because you're it's almost like a prepaid visa card okay so you send the money to the bank and in return for that money they send you a credit card we commonly will recommend institutions like Orchard Bank or First Premier or Capital One simply because you can go online and get approved within about 30 seconds to a minute it's all automated and it's all done online and they give you the directions right there online of what you need to do next where you need to send payment to the reason that Mortgage Solutions is good at helping individuals establish credit and rebuild their credit is because unlike a lot of people who work at banks um, we're a small company and we really want what's best for you and even if we can't help you write a mortgage loan right now we want to set you off and create a plan for you to follow so that you can at a later date get into that home loan um, a secured credit card is definitely one of the best things that you can do to establish yourself credit wise I have one right here for myself through Orchard Bank I got this back in 2000. I've had it ever since then. It helped me to reestablish my credit history. Um, and, uh, you know, I use this card very sporadically, but uh, it does the trick. And this card alone helps me go ahead and get approved for other credit cards later in the future. Um, so, moving on, the main thing that we want to try to accomplish here is to set you down the right path credit wise so if you talk to us and we say you know we can help you but we can't help you right now first you need to go ahead and take some of the right steps to help yourself okay um, it's important to know what those right steps are about 90 percent of the time I follow and give my advice the same exact advice on what they need to do and what plan they need to follow because regardless if you've had credit issues in the past or if you have no credit the plan the, the, the plan, plan is pretty much the same for those people okay and here's the plan we always recommend that you start off immediately with getting two secured credit cards they don't have to be secured but if you can only get approved for a secured card that's the way you need to go okay um, of course try other uh, lending institutions you could try a department store a gas station um, any type of credit card will help establish yourself credit wise uh, but if that doesn't work out for you don't get discouraged just get a secured credit card and get started with that so I always recommend to my clients I want you to get two secured credit cards and I give them Orchard Bank or First Premier or Capital One and then I'd like for you to call me back in about two weeks after you have the cards in hand. Once you have the two credit cards it's important to follow a very very specific formula which I'm going to go into detail and lay out for you. <clears throat> what I would like to do, like for all of my clients to do is when you get the two cards I want you to use both cards very sporadically and this takes a lot of discipline to maintain this um, but I like to I like for us to keep in mind the percentage of use formula which says I can never exceed 30 percent percentage of use during any billing cycle okay so a lot of times the secured credit cards are gonna have credit limits of about three hundred dollars 
So 30% of $300 is only $90. So what you'll need to do is when you get your own cards is just know what the high credit limit is and then determine what 30% of that is. And that's your mark which you never want to exceed. But the plan that I give my clients is very simple. I want you to go out and get two cards right away. I want you to use one card for one tank of gas because that will generally be 50 to 60 bucks and I know that that's not going to make you exceed the 30% mark. Once you make that purchase, I want you to put this card up, put it away, and don't use it ever again, not for a single thing, until you get your bill in the mail. I want you to take your second card, and I call this the reward card. I want you to go to your favorite department store and buy yourself a new pair of shoes within reason because we can't exceed the 30% of the high credit limit. Okay? So every month you're making one purchase on each card. Okay? Not to exceed generally $70, $80, $90 per month. And after you make that one purchase, you're going to be very disciplined and you're going to put the card up and you're not going to use it again until you get your bill in the mail. Now, once you get your bill in the mail, I want you to always pay enough on that bill to reduce the balance down to $10. Notice I didn't say I, I don't want you to pay the account off in full. I wa always want you to leave a $10 balance at the end of every month. It seems like the credit bureaus, if you pay account off to zero, and then they report on that zero balance, you don't seem to get as much bang for the buck, credit scoring wise, as you would if you leave a small balance. So the plan is very simple. Two credit cards, once you get the cards, you use each card once per month. Use one for gas, you could use one for groceries. Use one for gas, use one as a reward to treat yourself for staying disciplined and getting started down the right path. But once those purchases are made, you cannot use this card again until after you've reduced the balance, you've got your bill in the mail and reduced your balance down to $10. And so that's basically the plan. Let's go into some other things that might show up on a, on a credit report. Let's talk for a minute on collections, okay? This is a hotly, uh, a, a, a very debated topic about what to do with collections. I always tell my clients, I give them the same advice. Once a collection hits your credit report, the damage is done right there and then. Your score automatically drops by many points. Okay? And the only thing that can make that better is the more time that goes by. So if you have a collection from 06, from 07, the fact of the matter is, is I'm not really that concerned about it, and neither should you be. Because that's not having a, a it's having a very insignificant um, it's just not affecting your credit score that much, quite frankly. Okay, um, so any type of collections that are generally under five thousand bucks, you know, we're not. I'm not telling you to go out and try to make payment arrangements, and I certainly don't think that it's ever advisable for you to pay a third-party company who's touting credit repair thousands of dollars to try to get these collections removed, because frankly, that very seldom works. And in the rare cases that it does work, it's usually only temporary, and then those collections reappear. So in the case of collections, you know, the only time that I would ever advise my client to pay one of the collections off is under two circumstances. If the creditor makes the decision to try to take you to court, then you need to promptly make payment arrangements with them. Because if they take you to court and they win, that can turn into a judgment. When it's a judgment, they can start garnishing wages. Now typically you don't see that for a smaller collection. We're talking collections that are above $5,000 generally. Okay? Uh, but for any other collection, the only other time I would advise paying off a collection is if you can negotiate with the collection company for a deletion letter. Now, there's a vast difference between a deletion letter and a paid in full letter, okay? A paid in full letter just says basically that you paid the account, but the collection still remains on your credit report. That's not what we want. 
So the only time that we negotiate with a collection company would be to arrange to get a deletion letter. And because you still, if you have a collection, you still owe them some money, you do have some leverage in that case. So you could call up the collection company, or if they call you, uh, you could say, hey, I would be willing to pay you in full today, but only in exchange for a deletion letter, which would permanently delete the collection from my credit report. Okay? But under no circumstance will we accept anything less than that, specifically a paid in full letter, because that just won't do us any good. Okay? Um, lastly, let's, let's do a note on judgments. Okay? Judgments are bad. That's probably, aside from bankruptcy or foreclosures, a judgment is maybe you know, a close second or third behind those two instances. What a judgment is, is basically somebody's taken you to court um, and they won or you didn't show up and basically the judge awards them a judgment. Now, the problem with a judgment is that you're not going to be able to finance a home without having the judgment taken care of. So if you are in that situation where you have a judgment reporting on your credit report, then that's priority number one. But in most cases, you can do uh, a lot of these steps at the same time. So even though paying off the judgment or getting on a payment agreement with the creditor, that's a necessity if it is in fact a judgment, you can still be taking the right steps to help yourself improve your overall credit score by opening the right types of credit. Uh, so bottom line is here, guys, that you know we believe that everybody deserves their chance at home ownership. And if we talk to you on the phone and we say, you know, we can't help you right now, but here's the plan that you need to follow, um, we know that that plan works because we've done it hundreds of times with our past clients throughout the past decade. That plan works. And if you follow that plan and if you stay consistent with that plan and you do everything uh, just like I just spoke about in this video, you will be a homeowner. Uh, in some cases, you could be talking 90 days and you know you do these steps, you open a couple credit cards and you're good to go. Some cases it might be six months, some cases it might be a year. Okay, but It just really depends on your particular uh, credit profile and the way it stands today. But the bottom line is, is you can't delay in this because there's an excellent opportunity right now for you to be able to own your home. And if so, if credit is something that's holding you back, you just simply need to know the right steps to take in order to improve your situation. And you've got to get on board and be consistent with that. And it's a lot of discipline. Um, it's nothing that's difficult or hard to do. It's just a matter of doing it and staying disciplined in, in knowing why you're, you're following this plan and that it's going to work. And there's no doubt in my mind that it will. If you ever have any questions particular to your situation, feel free to call our office and ask for myself or Chris. Um, our office number here is 770-924-1111. Please feel free to uh, browse around the rest of our website. Uh, our blog is really good. It gives uh, more specific information about bankruptcies and short sales and foreclosures. And there's also uh, some available resources uh, for you to download pertaining to, uh, to credit scoring as well. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that this was helpful. But like I said, if there are any specific questions that you have, feel free to pick up the phone and call us at any time or shoot me an email at davetallman at mortgagesolutionsofgeorgia.com. Thank you.